I want to welcome again everyone to this session that I have entitled Zoom, 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 Zoom. I am your presenter today, Teresa Banks. You're welcome to call me Teresa or you can call me Terry. And I have been in Toastmasters since April 1st, 1999, a really long time. I've been a part of four different clubs. I'm currently a part of the New Faith Toastmasters in District 103, the Hispano Americano Club that is a part of District 30. And recently I became a District 103 trainer. I am excited today to talk with you about different features that make up Zoom. I'll be talking about Zoom past and present. I will also talk about cell phone functions, specifically for the Android. My apologies to you iPhone users, but I think you'll get the gist of things regardless. I'll also be talking about participant functions and host functions from a laptop. I do have three different handouts, two of them that are pretty based on Zoom and the features, kind of like a quick reference guide and a user guide. And also I'm a published author. I teach courses on how one can become published and also how you can market your book. And so you have information on how you can register for those classes if you so desire. And I also train in other areas for the district as well. You'll see that in that handout too, that says Teresa Banks as a part of its description. And then in regards to questions, there are a lot of Zoom features I will be covering today. I do therefore ask that you hold on to your questions, save them until the very end. Every Zoom function and feature certainly will not be covered today. There are many of them. However, you should get a pretty good idea on where to find things in Zoom. And if you still have questions that you're unable to ask today, my email address is there, mail to banks at gmail.com. You're welcome to email me after this session if I don't have a chance to answer your questions or if something comes up later that you would like me to answer. Please definitely take notes. You can open up a Word session off to the side of this Zoom session to take your notes or have the good old fashioned pen and paper on standby and you can take your notes as well. I do ask that you place yourself on mute. I'd hate to have to pause the session here to mute someone. Please make sure your session is muted as we move forward with this particular session. Zoom past and present. Let me first start there. You see a picture here on the screen of me when I was a little girl. I was probably four or five years old. And when I was growing up, Zoom, the word Zoom, or someone said it or mentioned it, it meant something entirely different from what we know it to mean today. Can I take you back? Let me take you back for a minute. Let's go back a bit, specifically to the 70s. In 1972, Zoom was a TV show. Take a look at this short little clip. I love that show. I think my sisters and I would watch it day in and day out. It was so fun, so creative, and it was really interesting and really amazing. We stay here in the 70s for a minute. In 1977, Zoom was a hit song being sung by the Commodores <laughs> with the lead singer being Lionel Richie. Yeah. Let's take a listen to this little clip. Oh, 
Uh, you have loved yes. that song. Yes, yes, yes. And hopefully yes. it brought back a few memories. Did it bring back a few memories? Yes, it did. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You are welcome. You're welcome. And I saw in the chat, Elizabeth remembered Zoom and I heard Jay's jamming to the Commodores. But let me bring us back. Let me bring us back to current day. Well, we know that Zoom is a cloud-based meeting platform. It was created in 2011 by Eric Young and 40 engineers. And it was originally named Saspi Incorporated. One thing you always want to do when it comes to Zoom is to make sure that you have the most current version of Zoom on your device. As I was preparing for today's training session, I didn't realize that my Zoom version was outdated until some of the features didn't appear in various portions of the screen. And so needless to say, make sure you have the most current version. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and move on to cell phone functions, specifically for the Android phone. When it comes to the Android, there is a Play Store that we can go to. When we go there, it's like shopping for different apps. And we can pull up the Zoom app and we can put it onto our cell phone. When you open up that app, you'll see a screen that looks something like this on your cell, where you'll have an opportunity to press that button that says, join a meeting, and that will put you right into a meeting within the Zoom tool. Now, the host of that meeting should have given you a 10-digit code that we call the meeting ID. You see mine here listed toward the top where the yellow arrow is. After you put that in, then you can make a decision on some name that you'd like to have displayed within the tool. I usually go by my nickname, Terry Banks, and that's what will appear. You will have a chance to change it later too, if you so desire. And then you press the join button and voila, you will be within Zoom, maybe. Now I say maybe because sometimes a host may add on a passcode. I highly recommend that you do, and I believe Zoom actually may require it at this particular point for security reasons. Be mindful that the passcode you put in here is case sensitive. And so if the host gave you an uppercase, lowercase, numbered type of passcode, however it's given to you, that is exactly how you want to put it in here. If you put it in incorrectly, then you will get a message saying that your passcode is wrong. You'll have to correct it before you can get in or reach back out to the host for the right information. Now, once you put that passcode in, you'll see one of these two potential screens, one that may show a quick view of your preview video if you indicated that you wanted your video to be shown. At this point, you can turn it off where you see the little picture of a video almost a little bit below the center of the screen. You could turn your video off at that time. Otherwise, you may see a waiting room type of picture. A lot of us saw that on the way into TLI today. We saw some type of message saying, we want to let you in, but not quite yet until the host is ready. And so you'll have some type of waiting room message that will appear. Now, I want to say that while you're waiting to get into the room, from the Zoom host perspective, perspective, their screen will look similar to this. Whomever owns that Zoom account will get a message saying, hey, there's a person waiting in your waiting room. And in the upper top portion of the screen toward the middle, they can hit the admit button and that will let that individual right in. Also toward the bottom, they can press the participants icon. And when they do that, they will see a list of participants. They can admit you that way can rename you right at that particular point if they want, or they can remove you altogether where you will not be able to get into that session. 
Now back to your side, as you are trying to get into this room, let's say that you are admitted into that Zoom room, you will be asked from your cell phone, how do you want to be heard? And how do you want to hear others? Once you get into that session, you can select Wi-Fi or cellular data to just use the speaker and the system across your phone. That's what I always select. Or you can dial in where you can call in even using your cell simultaneously and you can call that way and hear that way. Or if you have a landline phone, you can select that option where you dial in and listen and talk from your landline phone. If you select dial in, you'll be given a list of phone numbers like you see here off to the right. And once you're all done and you've selected a number, it will place that call and you'll get in that way. Now, you can select one or others, excuse me, I should say toward the bottom there, you, when you select one of the options here, whichever you select, whether it be the Wi-Fi or cellular data or the dial in, then others will be able to hear you. But if you don't select one, there's a possibility that you will not be heard once you get into that that session. And I remember early on when a lot of us were using Zoom, we forgot to select one or we didn't select one and people couldn't hear us. That was a part of the reason why. Now, with that said, moving forward, let's say you were able to get in, you made your selection, you're excited, you are now in that session. If the options that you see here are my little makeshift phone on this presentation deck don't appear, just tap the middle of your phone and you should see them toward the very bottom. Anytime you want to see other individuals that are within that session, just swipe to the left and you will see the different participants appear. Now, toward the bottom of the screen, you see different icons, the one that looks like a microphone. If you press it, you can mute and unmute yourself. The start video one, same thing. If you press it, that looks like a video. You'll be able to show your picture, your video, or turn it off. Participants, you can see all of the individuals that are listed within that session at one time. Chat, you literally have a chance to chat and to type into a session and talk with either the host or other individuals that are in Zoom with you. And then reactions. You can do a little smiley face at some point if you want. You can raise your hand and do other reactions that the host has permitted you to do under that reactions icon. And then share. Let's say you want to share a picture from your phone. You can do that by pressing share and then selecting whatever you want to share that's within your phone already saved. Whiteboard could be turned on by the host where it will pop a whiteboard kind of like we see in school and you'll be able to make use of that whiteboard. And then there's more. Some people don't realize that you can select more with the three dots by it and you'll see a number of additional settings that you can pick from like you see here on the screen. You may want to change your background and maybe have it blurred out, for example. You may want to dis disconnect from your audio from your phone. If you're switching to a laptop, for example, that'll give you the chance to do that. So definitely play around with those different additional settings and adjust and change them as the need arises. Now, anytime you want to exit with your phone, I think a lot of us are familiar with leave. Just press that leave button and you'll be able to exit from the session and use your phone for whatever else you want. Now, moving on to participant functions from a laptop, you have a number of options you can do if you're not the host and you've been invited to a meeting. But keep in mind that the actions that you do in Zoom will be restricted based on what that host or co-host is allowing you to do. Now, when you go into a meeting, please also note that the host may be saving the chat details. I have hit the record button, for example, for this session, and the host for this particular meeting almost, or could, I should say, not almost, but could, have their 
setting set up in such a way that the chat details are always saved. And so be mindful of that. If you are in a Zoom meeting and you're just typing away, thinking it's a personal one-on-one -on -one discussion with someone that's in Zoom or with the host, that information all could be saved where only the host could view it later. And then when the host is not recording, again, I'm recording this session and you're aware of that, you may still be recorded. Someone may have their cell phone up and could be recording the whole thing or software on their laptop or desktop, for example, where they could be recording. And so be aware that you could still be recorded even if someone has not indicated that they are recording. In the upper left-hand corner, there is a little icon. It looks like a green shield in Zoom. If you press that when you're in a session, you'll be able to see the generic and basic Zoom information, the meeting ID that you're in, the passcode that was used, and the link, for example, will be displayed. On the opposite side of the screen, some of us are familiar with view. View, you can change up if you want. You may want gallery view where you see all these boxes that show up with either the faces or the background information of individuals that are in the session, or you may wanna do speaker view, where as someone's talking, they will come to the forefront and you will be able to see them. So always play around with the view and adjust it as you may want to adjust it. At the bottom of the screen, there are a number of different icons that you may see, again, depending on the permissions the host has given to you. One of them is participants. With participants, you can see the individuals that are in the session. You can see if their microphones are on, if they're muted or unmuted, if their video's on or not by way of that participants list. And you can also opt to chat from them that way as well. You can chat that way from participants participants, especially if you are a co-host, or from chat itself, and you can share files under the chat feature. Now, under reactions, I mentioned that for the cell phone, it works the same here as a participant from a laptop. You can select re reactions. The basic ones are being able to raise your hand, to do a smiley face or a heart. There are additional reactions you can do, and if the host permits it, you will have access to, the, to do them as well. Now with apps, apps is so amazing where you can bring in additional tools like a, a countdown screen, for example. And I will show you more about apps when I talk about the functions that are available to the host. You'll see that a bit in more detail. Now leave works the same on the laptop as it does on the cell phone. You can press that leave button Button, and then you'll have the ability to exit out of your session. I want to talk about share screen for a bit because I see a lot of individuals struggle with how they can share their screen. Before you press share screen, open the document on your device that you want to share. Let me stress that because a lot of people don't, and that's step one and where you'll have problems right away. Before you even press the button at the bottom of Zoom to say share screen, go ahead and open up the document on your device that you want to share. Next up, when the share screen box opens, like the box that I see that you see as well here on the screen, pick your document from the tiny windows that are shown. Now, if you haven't opened it already, you won't see it within a tiny window on the screen. That's why I said first, open it up. That way, you'll be able to go ahead and see it. Once you've selected it, a dark blue border will be around that tiny little window for the document that you want to share. If your document has audio or video, like the one that I shared today, I made sure that I selected the share screen. You can also select the video clip one if you have a video versus just, for example, an audio clip that you would want people to hear. If you don't share the sound, 
people won't be able to hear the sound. And on your side, you'll hear it and you'll think, oh, people heard it, all was well. And people will tell you later, I couldn't even hear what you were trying to share. Make sure- I'm sorry, could you, you repeat share. that? No, could absolutely. Repeat about, I about the sound? I didn't get that. Absolutely, I can. There is an arrow right toward the bottom of the big white box that you see listed here on the screen. And right next to it, it says share sound and it says optimize for video clip. And what I'm saying here is that if you have, let's say an audio clip within your document, or if you have a video clip within your document, you wanna make sure that you select, that you press the little box next to share sound or that you press the little box next to optimize for video clip if you have a video clip. And when you do that, you'll be sharing the sound with the individuals that are within the session. Now, moving forward, you want to then press the blue share button after you're all set, you're all ready. And when you do that, you will be sharing your screen. Others will be able to see your screen that you're sharing. And at the same time, you'll see a little navigation box that will pop up. And I won't go through and discuss every little thing within that box, but I will point out that anytime you're ready to stop your screen share, just press that stop share button. And when you have time, go through all the different options that are available within that navigation bar. There are quite, quite many features that you'll see within it. Now, one other thing I wanna mention before I leave this screen is within the white box up here at the very top, I wanna point out we are under what's called the basic tab when you're looking to share different documents that are on your, your device, but there's also an advanced tab, there's a files tab, and there's an apps tab. Needless to say, there are other things that you can share in Zoom outside of just documents. And so when you are under share, take a look when you have time and definitely check out those other things that you can share as well. Now, moving right along, still as a participant in Zoom, you can mute and unmute, just as I mentioned, on a cell phone. You can do that when you are on a laptop as well. You can press the start video, and that will open up your video session if you want to display yourself or it will turn it off. So there are little up carrots. There's a little up symbol that's right next to a lot of the features in Zoom. Be sure to press those when you have time and you will see other things that Zoom can do. If you press the up little carrots, as I like to call it, that little up symbol next to start video, will display this little box that you see that's showing right here where you can blur your background or you can choose a virtual background or you can press video settings. And when you press video settings, up will pop other settings that are available to you. And then you can walk through each of those individual settings. Again, even more that you can do in Zoom. There are general settings, video, audio, share screen, background and effects and such. And then under background and effects, that's where you can choose a virtual background. You will need to add the photos first before you select a virtual background. There's a little plus sign. If you look at my box, my white box to the right, there's one little picture in the box. It looks like some grass or something. Right above it to the far right, there's a plus sign. You would press the little plus sign and you'll have the opportunity to walk through the instructions from that to add a new image that will then appear here. And then all you have to do is select the one that you want to, do, to take on your virtual background. You can take the blur one, you can select that one. In my example here, I could select the one where it looks like the San Francisco Bridge. 
And so you can pull in virtual backgrounds. You can use a green screen if you want. Mirror my video. If you have a picture that's on the screen for your video and you want to just flip it horizontally, it will do that. And then under studio effects, studio effects is a lot of fun where every time you open up your Zoom session, you may want a hat on your head, for example. You can change your image and change your features using studio effects. Definitely play around with that when you have a chance. Now, something people don't realize is when we have all these cool images that are on the screen, them around. We can move people around on our screen. Take, for example, the individual who is in the upper right-hand corner. I might want to move that person somewhere else, like to the very bottom. You would simply hold your mouse button and drag them to wherever you want them to go. In this case, I drag them to the bottom and automatically Zoom will re reshuffle the whole deck around of people, which I think is really cool and a lot of fun to do. And there are different reasons that people may want to move someone around. It could be the timer, for example, that you want to move in a different position. And if you move a person around, you will then see an additional option under view to reshuffle the deck back to the way that it was before. Something I want to mention on this screen that I hear people say all the time is how do you rename yourself? One way you can do it is if you hover over your box, the box that has your picture on it, and you move your mouse a little bit, you'll see a little blue box appear that has three little dots within it. And one option that you have is you can rename yourself. That's one way to do it. Another way is you can go under the participants op option at the very bottom, that icon that you see that says participants. Up will pop the list. You'll find yourself and you'll have an option to rename yourself that way as well. Now, the last area I want to talk about today before I see if there are any questions that anyone has, the host functions from a laptop. And I will be going over the functions under the Zoom Plan Pro. There are a lot of different functions. There's one that are that you can have that's free. There are a number of functions under the free Zoom Plan. There are other Zoom plans that are out there where you can do a lot more features. You'll have a lot more individuals that can come into your Zoom session. The plan that I have personally is the pro, and that's the one I'll discuss today for the laptop. One thing I want to mention, if you have a Zoom account, take the time under your account to go through each and every menu item that you have from home all the way down to reports. There's one under recordings where you'll be able to see anything you've recorded before, either in the current time or some past recordings that you have out there. You can share the link to them or you can download them and share the downloaded version of them. I always suggest that you save any recordings that are really important to you. Usually after about 30 days, Zoom will say, I'm sorry, Terry, I'm about to delete this. And so I suggest that you save and then forward over that saved copy of any recordings you really want to hold on to. to. Under settings, you can set up various defaults of the way that you want your Zoom room to function. And then under reports, there are various reports. Who was in your room? How long did they stay? Definitely check out reports. There are whiteboard settings, notes settings. Definitely check out all of your menu items for your specific Zoom account and set it up the way that you want it to be set up. There are a couple of things I do want to mention under having Zoom and a Zoom account. One thing I hear all the time as members say, the link is always changing. I want to join a Zoom session for either Toastmasters or something else, but there's always a different link or a different passcode. I, I can't remember it, or I'm tired of fishing out an email to know what link to go to and what the passcode should be. 
Well, as the Zoom account owner, you can set a default. When I start up my Zoom rooms, I never schedule the meetings. I used to in the past, but the easier way for me is to set up a default link and a default meeting ID and a default passcode. And I can always change the passcode later when and if I so desire. If you want to set up a default meeting ID, which would then give you a default meeting link, under your Zoom account, just go to profile. After you've gone to profile, within your profile, find the area that says meeting. And then once you do that, you will be able to edit that particular sec sec section under meeting. And then there's an area that says personal meeting ID. Here is where you can put in whatever meeting ID you want. I use my phone number, 708-790-5787, my cell phone number. That is my meeting ID for my meeting room. It will then give me a Zoom link and I can share that link anytime I want. It's always the same and I, I myself as the host never forget it because it's my cell phone number. And so keep in mind going under profile, under meeting, press edit. And then within the personal meeting ID area, change your meeting ID. By default, you'll be given a link. And at the end of that will be your whatever your meeting ID is. And then you can save it and you'll be good to go. One other thing I want to mention is setting up a default passcode. If you go under meetings and then you go under personal room, you'll now be able to select edit, and now you can update the passcode. You see there on this particular screen, this is my personal meeting room, and you see my meeting ID, again, just my cell phone number. Here you can change your passcode to whatever you want it to be. Let's say I, I make it TLI 2023, and then I save it. And then all I need to do is select join now. And so if I set things up this way, where now I have a default meeting ID and I have a default passcode, whenever I want to start a meeting, I simply go under meetings, personal room, join now. That's all I do. I never schedule any Zoom rooms as a result. I'm good to go. If I ever want to change my passcode, I would go under meetings, personal room, edit, change the passcode to something else, and that's all I do. Meeting ID, still always the same, 708-790-5787, and that's always the same link every time. So think about doing that. You can still schedule your meetings. If you find it easier to do it that way, you can still do it, but this is an alternative if you don't wanna schedule the meetings, and more importantly, if you always want your link to be the same. Now, moving into the host functions, you can do the same thing that the participants can do. As a result, I'm not going to rehash what I talked about in regards to what the participants can do. You can literally Google Zoom roles for the host, the co-host, and participants, and up will pop this great little table that will show you what all three can do, what the host can do, the co-host, and the participants. Definitely Google that so you'll see a table on what each can do. Now, one thing I do want to mention in addition to what I talked about already that participants can do, and again, also therefore hosts can do, a host can go into an immersive view. I definitely suggest that when you are hosting your meetings that you take individuals into this view. Instead of the normal gallery view of what they would see, it would look like they're sitting in a classroom, for example, or would look like they are faces in an art gallery. Definitely use that immersive view. It's an interesting view to have set up, and it takes you out of just that plain gallery view when you are hosting your meetings. You can select record at any time if you so desire. I always recommend that you let individuals know before you select record that you are going to record that session in advance. There are some people that may 
not want to be recorded or may not want their image to be recorded, it's great to give them a heads up. I talked briefly about apps when I was talking about participant functions. Here you can see it a little bit better that when you press apps, especially as the host, there are a lot of apps that you can pull in. For example, the music app. If you select the music app, you will literally be given choices of music you can pick from. And then when you open up your Zoom session, the music will start to play. So consider some of the different apps, walk through them of the different choices. There are timing apps that are out there, for example, and you may want to use those by default as something to work within your Zoom session. Now, when you as a host press the end button, you have a couple of options in leaving the meeting. You won't have leave, you will have in. You can leave the, the meeting or you can end the meeting for everyone, which is kind of fun. Sometimes people may be in the middle of, of conversation. And so definitely let them know the meeting is about to end before you shut them all off. Do not, as the host, leave your meeting abandoned. Always assign someone else as a host or assign someone as a the co-host, you don't want people in here doing whatever they want to do and playing around. It's under your name and under your session. And so definitely make sure that you reassign your meeting to someone before you take off and you exit. Under security, I love, love, love this button. If you press your security shield at the very bottom, you will see a list of options of things you can do. Something I see that happens often is that people will make a person a co-host or a host just to get to give them the ability to share the screen. You don't have to do that. And you don't want to do that because that will also give them all these other special powers, right? That you can do as a host. All you have to do instead is press your security shield and then voila, you will have this box. And then you can press, for example, share screen, you can press it again to turn it off. You press it to turn it off. You press it to turn it off. Same thing with chat, the ability to let people be able to start their videos. You can control it all from that security box. Something else you can control that I love that Zoom added is a feature to suspend participant activities. What if you had a hacker that came into your room that started doing different things immediately you can shut it down with suspend participant activities. You press that suspend button, everyone will be muted. Their video will be turned off, share screen will be stopped. You'll feel like a wizard with special abilities and power. So definitely take advantage of that only if you need to. Now, another option you have as host is to set up a poll. Let's say you wanted to set up a poll, just saying, how is your day? You could do that. If you go under polls, you press that little plus button within the box, it'll walk you through the steps to set up a poll and then to initiate it. That's a lot of fun and really quick to create. Something we're familiar with, and we're in one right now, the breakout rooms. You can create breakout rooms. I believe the limit, at least for my account, is 50. I can't imagine creating that many. But you can create the breakout rooms where individuals can be assigned by you automatically or they can be assigned manually, meaning once you have a list of the participants, you can manually put them into a room once you have them there one by one. You can do it in advance. That's the assigned automatically. Otherwise, you can do it one by one as they come into a room or you can let them just choose themselves. It's strictly up to you. And then press create and it'll walk you through the steps on setting up those breakout rooms. Under participants, when you press that as a host, you have additional things you can do. If you're just a regular participant, you can more than likely chat and rename yourself. But as a host here, you can set up an additional host or a co-host. You can rename a person, you can put a person in a waiting room, or you can remove them altogether. 
Now, under your security shield, I mentioned that earlier, right? The security shield at the very bottom, you can actually lock your meeting. And if you lock your meeting under your security screen, no one else will be able to get into that meeting from that point on. And so you won't have to worry about taking people out and all of that. If you remove them and you lock your meeting, they won't be able to get back in. Now, a few more things I want to mention before I take questions. I want to talk about some cool new features that are in Zoom. And this is when I realized I was not on the most current version because I thought I don't see these new features and I can't use them. And that was why. Make sure you're on the most current version of Zoom. If you are, you will see the cool new feature summary. When you press summary, you'll get this disclaimer that pops up saying that it works alongside AI Companion. AI stands for Artificial Intelligence. And when you use AI Companion and summary, summary works like a secretary. It will literally be taking notes of different things going on with your meeting. And then once you press that got it button after you've read the little disclaimer it gives to you, it will change the word summary to stop summary so that if any, at any time you want it to stop doing what it's doing, you can hit that button again and it will stop it. But all through your meeting, it's taking notes, it's jotting things down. And then once you end your meeting, eventually you'll get an email that has summarized your meeting. And I tell you, it's kind of spooky. It does a great job. I've tried this and tested it out. It does a really, really good job. So play around with the summary feature. Now, I said it works alongside AI Companion, Artificial Intelligence Companion. You do need to have this turned on. And again, a reminder, you must be on the current version of Zoom to even see this as a feature on your Zoom screen. When you press that AI companion icon, it will pop on the right-hand side a screen that looks like this. I suggest you only let yourself do it. Only let yourself or other hosts or co-hosts do it in the beginning and not everyone else. So just select the only host button. When you do that, you'll get a little disclaimer saying, here's what I'm going to do. I will be capturing things. I'll be answering questions that are asked of me. You got it? And you'll say, okay, I got it. I've got it. You know, press the blue got it button. And when you do, two things will happen. In the upper left-hand corner, a star will appear, a little white star that shows you you are in AI companion mode. And simultaneously, you'll get a box on the right-hand side of the screen saying, welcome to AI companion. It'll give you some examples of some things you can try. As I tested it out. And I said, how long has the meeting been going on? And AI Companion says, the meeting has been going on for approximately one hour and 13 minutes. And it was great. So it's really cool to play around with it. And again, I suggest that you play around with it or your hosts and co-hosts before you hand it over to other individuals. And things that are typed here and captured here are subject to being a part of your summary information later as well. The last area I want to cover today, again, you must be current with the latest Zoom version, is the area called notes. I said that you can have the computer summarize things, but hey, if you don't want AI to do it and the computer to do it, now on Zoom, you can create notes. You can go under the notes area, and when you press that notes icon, up will pop this screen, and you can select new notes. And you can type away, type different notes. And later you'll see you can also share those notes within the tool as well. So again, really, really cool and really, really fun and interesting things that you can do in Zoom. I said that I have handouts. You should see three different handouts that are within the chat. I'll repost those in just a second in the event that you don't have them and you cannot see them. Two are Zoom user guides and quick reference guides. And the last one is information on courses that I teach for the district, as well as personally from my publishing company 
on how you can become published and how you can market your book. And I do also want to say, and I'll get to questions here in just a moment, that you have access to me after this session. Here is my email address, mailtobanks at gmail.com. I appreciate everyone attending today's session, and I'm now going to pause to see if there are any questions that anyone has on any, anything that was covered. I have a question. To, this is James Willis right? from Bold Literary Talkers. And my oh, question, yes, James, go right ahead. What is your uh, question? You were talking about sound and how you can incorporate sound on from your computer to so that the listening audience can hear sound. How do you do it in such a way where if I have to say something while the while the sound is playing, the volume automatically dips down while I'm speaking? And then it comes back up to, um, and it comes back up when I'm done speaking. Is what that possible? I would suggest in those cases, I have never had a situation where I've seen it to be possible. And if someone else here in the session knows a way to do it, please feel free to chime in. What I've done to help with that in the past is I will start manually start my session under, let's say, a lower volume, and then I'll control it and raise it and make it higher. You saw my PowerPoint presentation, for example. If I want it sound within it, then there are moments where I'll have the sound kind of loud, and then I will have it, you know, dot kind of drop to a lower sound, and then I will have it louder. I will manually control that within the deck by way of the little audio clips that I put in it. And so that's the way that I've done it in the past. Is that, does that make sense or is that kind of confusing? Yes. Makes perfect sense. Okay. Because within, for example, PowerPoint, you can have audio clips that you put in the PowerPoint presentation deck. And so within yes. the deck itself, I'll, you know, raise and lower the sound that way. I'll do it that way and control it that way. Or in advance, I will have set it to a lower sound. And then after I've spoken and talked, then I'll press a button within the PowerPoint presentation deck that would raise the sound by way of bringing in a new audio clip or proceeding, having that audio clip proceed and move forward. Is there anyone else within the session that has played with sound and adjusted the sound differently. I know one other way I can recommend too is right now I'm on two laptops. I'm on two different laptops. And so I could have the sound controlled by my second laptop and control it that way too, raise and lower it, and then have a main laptop, the one that I'm on, not do it. And so that's another way. I see Ruthie, Ruthie, with your hand up, were you commenting on the sound or did you have a question on something else? James, thank you for your question. It's a question thank on you. something else. Um, I put it in the chat, but I was asking if, uh, if I have a reoccurring meeting, can I permanently add a person as a co-host to always be able to be on that particular meeting? I've tried in the past and had problems with it. Ruthie, I will check on that to let you know, and I'm making notes right now. I have never used it, but as you've probably seen within Zoom, there is a setting where you can put in a co-host, but I will have to find that out and let you know. If you could drop me an email and that way I'll have your email address, I'll have to find out. Great question, Ruthie, from you as well. And James, great question. Anyone else? I think I saw, oh, Dr. Keisha, what is your question, ma'am? Well, first of all, very good presentation. Thank you so much. I have two questions. The first one is you said you would have slides in the chat. Did I miss it? Or are you going to do that later? Or 
I will re-add them now. What I found is you, if you place information in the chat before individuals have come in, then they may not see them. And so I will place them in the chat again right now. Thank you. And the second question is sort of related to Mark. I did notice your slides and I thought that was awesome how you were playing them, you know, Zoom and and uh, Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Come on, Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. You say place, I'm, I'm better with PowerPoint. So when you say place it in the on the deck, the clips, how do you do it on PowerPoint? I know this is Zoom, but how would you put it in your PowerPoint presentation? Music. If I, let me share <clears throat> my screen again. Let me see if I've broken out of it. I believe I have. And I, that's a great question, Dr. Keisha. I'm going to do a share screen. Hopefully everyone can see it. I believe you can see it now. Yeah. Within my yeah. presentation deck, if I move to this screen here, this screen here with the television on it, it has audio. But if we go under at the very top under PowerPoint and we place, we hit, I should say the insert button over here to the far right hand side, that's where you can add your audio. And so you can add audio that's on your computer or something that you record on the fly. Same thing with video. You can add your video in this way. And so this is okay. the way you would add the audio. Awesome. Does that Thank answer you. your question? Perfect. Thank you so much. You are welcome. And while Karen, I'm here with- I have a question, oh, um, Karen. Uh, yes. I look for that immerse, um, I guess, view. I do not see it. When I click on view, I just see speaker gallery, hide self view, and some others. I don't see where it says immerse. We could change the view of the meeting instead of having everybody just in gallery or speaker view. And you are right. You won't see it. You won't see it as a, if you are not a host or a co-host of a meeting, you're right, Mark, you won't see it. And even though I'm a host, I still cannot currently see it. The Zoom, whomever owns the Zoom account dictates what individuals are able to do, what views you can see, what access you can have. And so first and foremost, you'd have to be the host or a co-host if the host has granted those features to a co-host in order to see it. Okay. Don't you feel like you're missing out, right? <laughs> yeah. Carrie, I have a quick question. I'm trying to get your contact info. I saw it appear and then it disappeared before I could write it down. Oh, no. Thank you first for your question, Mark. Great question. And Jay, I will put my email address within the chat. And Thank something you. to remember everyone is there are a zillion and one, I kid you not, there's a zillion and one Zoom features. It is always important to take a look first, if you are a Zoom host or someone with a Zoom account, as I mentioned, those menu items, take the time to look through each individual one to see what it does and things that you can do maybe in addition to what I can do based on the type of account that you've purchased, you may be able to do more than what I've explained here and that I can do. And then as a participant, definitely play around with the features. What's behind this? What can I do with that? And see what you can do, especially under those little carrot things. As I said, if you press the one, for example, next to chat, I'll mention this and I'll get another question I see with a hand raised. If you do it right now, everyone that's within the session at the bottom, oh, I see we have one minute left under chat. If you press that little up Carol carrot, it says show chat previews. With that, you could turn it off or on if you wanna see just a few words of what people have put in the chat. James, back to you. Did you have another quick, quick question? 